Hello everyone, it's Friday, Composer Profile Day. Today we're going to be talking about Dmitry Shostakovich. Now for the record, there are going to be a lot of Russian names in this video, so I will put most of these names up on the screen for you to read since I'm probably going to pronounce them wrong. So anyway, let's get started. <music> Dmitry Shlashtakovich was born on September 25th, 1906 in St. Petersburg, Russia. He was the second of three children born to his father and to his mother. His father made a living as a chemist and his mother was a pianist, and thus the source of Dmitry's musical inspiration from a very early age. A little background on Dmitry's family. His paternal grandfather was of Polish Roman Catholic descent, his last name originally being Zostakowicz. But Dmitry's immediate family hailed from Siberia, most likely due to exile in the country after corruption. Like most composers we've discussed, Dmitry showed an interest in music at a very young age when he began piano lessons with his mother at age nine. Some of his major influences included Bach, Beethoven, and Matis Mazursky. In 1919, when Dmitry was 13 years old, he entered the Petrograd Conservatory in St. Petersburg, which was headed by another famous composer at the time, Alexander Glazunov. While at Petrograd, Dmitry studied piano with this man, and composition with Maximilian Steinberg. It's worth noting that Steinberg attempted to train Dmitri to compose in the paths of the great Russian composers, but instead Dmitri decided to take a different route and compose more like those of Stravinsky and Prokofiev. Dmitri's first major work, his first symphony, was completed in 1926 when he was 19 years old. Again, I'm not sure what the people during this decade were feeding their children, but I could really use some of that. I haven't written any kind of good music in like a year. But anyway, after graduation and the completion of his first symphony, Dmitri began to develop relationships with composers and collaborate with them on different projects. Some of these projects included a project in 1929 with this writer, this artist, and this director. I am not Russian. I am not trying to pronounce these names. Then in 1934, he collaborated with this person, on the opera Katrina is Mailov. This performance was, how shall I say, the start of a political outrage against the arts. Present in the audience during one of these performances was none other than the infamous Joseph Stalin. It's noted that Dmitri noticed Stalin's sheer displeasure of the sounds coming from the pit orchestra, specifically the brass and percussion, and he also noticed that Stalin and the people with him laughed during several scenes of the play that were meant to be very meaningful. Not surprisingly, an article was written about the play condemning it, saying that it was coarse, primitive, and vulgar. Sounds like Family Guy, but with more class. Ironically enough, 1936 was the same year that many of Dmitri's colleagues in the music industry were either imprisoned or killed because of the great terror that broke out. With this fear of imprisonment, Dmitri called off the performance of his fourth symphony, and things would only get worse from there on out. In 1941, the Nazis invaded the Soviet Union and subsequently usurped the city of St. Petersburg, at the time called Leningrad. During this time, Dmitri was on night watch patrol, where he would neutralize bombs and be in involved in firefighting. Now, by the end of the year, he would evacuate from the city. It was also during this time that he composed his seventh symphony called Leningrad after the city, which won him national and international recognition. A 1948 marked the second instance of denunciation on Dmitri, where he, along with other major composers during that time, like Sergei Prokofiev, were accused of writing inappropriate and formalist music. This resulted in a lot of music being banned from performance. In the wake of this blow, Dmitri focused on composing other music like his violin concerto. And the 1950s saw a new light for Dmitri, and a good light at that. In 1954, he won the International Peace Prize. He also became the Secretary of the Union of Composers of Russia in 1959, a position he held for nearly 20 years. He also taught and promoted many talented musicians he came into contact with, such as these right here. I am not going to try to pronounce them because I'm sure I won't do it right. Dmitri died on August 9th, 1975 at the age of 68. Some sources suggest that he died of a heart attack, others it was lung cancer. Regardless, Dmitri's music left an indelible mark on the music world. During his life he composed 15 symphonies, upwards of several operas, and numerous chamber works and concerti, all of which are performed and appreciated now as much as they were when they first premiered. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed this one, look for another one of these next Friday and another video sometime next week. I'll guarantee you at least one more video in addition to this. Have a great weekend and I'll see you all next week.